woodcraft, helping you make wood work. It was good there. All right, welcome everybody who made it out for our woodcraft demo today. Um, I'm going to be talking about how to use set up the 45 degree lock miter bit. Uh, I grabbed one out of the classroom. This is made by Wood River. Uh, this one will do half inch up to three quarter inch material. Does that mean you have to do half or three quarter? No, it could be anything between there. That's fine as long as all your stock that you're using is milled the same. Um, which also when you are doing this, whether it be for small boxes, uh, drawers for cabinetry, mill up extra wood so you have lots of extra to play with. I preset this up earlier in the classroom. It can take upwards of 20 to 30 minutes to do. Um, so I've got it preset. I'm going to walk you through how it works. And in the end, if you would like a set of instructions, I'm going to cover over the name on there. A set of instructions we can print out for you. These are the best ones I have found uh, on the internet. These are actually for a competitor. Their specific router bit, but it works with this. It should work with the white side and also with the Freud. So great instructions. And I know, Jerry, you said you have one of these you haven't tried before. Uh, Denny has apparently tried to use this in the classroom, had issues with it. These are fantastic instructions. So the first thing to do is get your stock. Uh, in this case, I just grabbed poplar. This is all three quarter inch. Works just fine. What you need to do is find a center line on here. And there is a center line on this bit. You can't really see it. Um, where this upper carbide tooth is, there's a piece behind it. I kind of use that as my beginning center line. And I will align that with this mark that I've made on there. You see, I didn't grab any measuring tools. I just found what was close to center. I'll put it in between that little mark that I made on there. It's just to get it started. Um, you notice I haven't really done anything with the fence except for bring it out so that about half the bit is poking out or a little less than half. Um, in the end, it should be the thickness of this that's poking out, but don't, don't even worry about that at this point. All we're, all's we're doing is finding center. So the first thing we're going to do is run two pieces flat down on the table through the bit. And there are pictures along with these instructions that are on here so that if you, when you set these up and put them together, you, you have to follow the pictures uh, as to which cut is going which direction. So the first thing we're going to do is two end grain cuts across there and we're going to stick them together and see how they fit this way. So first thing is adjusting height on there. So I'm going to put on my safety equipment here. I'm going to use you can use a regular miter gauge. We have the slider here from Jessam. Um, also, if you want, uh, on these practice pieces, I don't worry about a backer piece, but you can run a backer on there if you don't want it to split out. Or leave your piece wider than normal, and then just trim it off in the end, so if there's any tear out on there. I'm not going to worry about using backer pieces for this. Question. Yes? If you use the regular miter gauge, you got to make sure that fence is parallel to the Grew, right? Yes, and this is a nice fence where you can actually uh, set it to the gauge on the sides here. So you can set it up. I normally put this zero on center. Um, I brought the fence up close to it. These gauges weren't actually set. So after I brought the fence up, I zeroed out the fence to these uh, to the rules that are on each side. There's a little thumb screw up underneath. And that way, any movement I'm going to do after this, when I adjust the fence, I can adjust it from that zero mark and know that both sides are exactly the same. Okay. Um, miter gauge, if you're using a regular miter gauge in your miter slot, you're probably going to have to put an auxiliary fence on there so that you can get some extra backing on there. And then the one push stick that I, or push block that I don't normally use or recommend, I'm actually going to use one to help hold the stock down as I'm pushing it through so it doesn't jump around on me. So all of that stuff here, unfortunately you can't use a, uh, a feather board with this. The miter gauge gets in the way. So no feather board at this point. All right. Um, I will also mark these A and B just so I can keep them together. All right. 
and I run them slow. The bit's rather big. Some of the white side or larger bits are going to be huge. Slow down your router. Uh, we're all set here. It's locked down. There's the first one. I'm going to run the second one. Pardon? A little quieter, I'll try. Shh. All right. I'm not worried about the tear out. Pull that off. And then one piece to the right hand side is going to be with the cut up and the other one is cut down. You slide those together and you're looking to see if these are flush. I don't care if there's still a flat edge on here or not, as long as they're flush you know that uh, as long as they're flush you know that uh, your height is correct. If it's not, and I say that this one on the right hand side is down, if you got this and this was sticking up the pictures in the directions there will tell you the bit is too high. Uh, if it's going the other direction, the bit is too low. Uh, nice caliper on here so you can adjust that a little bit and then do another pass. You have to start with a clean end. Uh, so again, lots of extra stock on there. Now that is set. I've pre-done all that so I don't have to fiddle around with it too much. All right, from there is setting the fence. Uh, I, you do do a cut after you have that. What you want to end up with is that this is a knife edge. It'll just take that edge off so there's no flat on there. So I've actually set the fence back just barely and done that cut. So I get that. And then you do a face grain cut. So this one's going to be vertical. This one's a little difficult. It's such a big bit that's a little bit narrow of a piece of wood. What you want to be careful for is that you don't dive down into your clearance, zero clearance plate on there. Uh, so this is getting on the narrow side for this bit. A little bit wider be a little safer. You want to be able to get it all the way across. I am going to use a feather board with this to help hold it against the fence just before the bit here. And I'm going to use a different push block here that has a couple keepers on the back so I don't get my fingers in the way. Can I you can. Now, I have the similar table. I okay. How do you, do you prevent tear out on the end? Uh, you'd have to run a backer board in there. Sorry? A backer board, so it'd be a separate piece behind it that's butted right up against I mean, to it. On the cut you just made, you didn't. No, I didn't. I wasn't worried about a backer piece in there because this is just test stock. Okay. So you could do one or two things. You can put a backer piece in there to help prevent that right. or leave your stock wide and trim off any tear out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on this test stuff, I, I really don't care if it chips out. So, all right, featherboard set. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, the push block so that you can get your fingers out of the way, uh, push in and down. And you got to be very careful that at any time you're not going to tilt this one way or the other. All right. So this one, again, take slow. Let the, let the cutter do the work. bit of tear up. That is all right. <clears throat> so now you can take your first board again and you can set them together. And you're going to look at that edge to see if I can get these pushed together all the way that they meet up 
I'm going to have to run that piece through again. I must have tilted it slightly. If you do do that, you can run it again through uh, without changing anything. And I'm going to go ahead and do that to clean that up. Um, but what you would want to look at at this point is how is this piece in relationship to the other? Is it down? Is it up? Uh, that will tell you if your fence needs to be moved forward so less bit is exposed or moved back if more, uh, if you need to uh, uh, expose more bit. Okay, I'm going to run this through one more time so it looks a little better here. I tilted it slightly, but it should be pretty close. In the end, so I tilted it slightly and I kind of dug into it slightly there, but in the end you end up having two corners that come together, should be perfectly flush, and you have lots of gluing surface in there where a normal miter joint you'd have to reinforce with splines um, or a, uh, uh, some biscuits. What's the strength of the joint as compared to other joints? Uh, it's not the strongest joint. Miter joints typically aren't very strong, so you have to reinforce them. This gives you lots of uh, gluing surface on the, on the uh, side grain there. But you do have a good surface. Yeah, yeah, this should be, once it's set up, it should give you a nice square corner. Uh, just a couple clamps, you shouldn't have to have anything else with it to hold it. It's not going to slide around on you. Uh, it's stronger than a regular 45, but not as strong as a box joint or a dovetail. Did you change anything if you're using a wood like uh, hard maple or oak? No, it's all set up the same. Poplar? Yeah, this is poplar. I grabbed this because it was pre-dimensioned. I didn't have to fiddle around with that. Um, no, it's all the same. It wouldn't matter what kind of wood you're using. You could do it with plywood as well. Um, you got to be careful, it will tear out a lot on plywood, but it works the same. Other questions? Like I said, I'll have uh, instructions if you like. I can print them out for you to help. Yeah, the best ones I can find. All right, thanks for coming today.